A warm welcome to GRTS News broadcasting for viewers in the Gambia and around the world. Our top stories this hour. The Gambia's Catholic community pays their final to respects to the late Father Reverend Peter Solomon Gomez. Peter Solomon Gomez. A long nights of work to finish customer orders. Our reporters visit tailors across the city as they rush to complete final garments for Tobaski festivities. Increasing women's participation Mr. in the women, civic Mr. process, Mr. the Ministry of Gender and Children sensitizes women leaders across the, the country on governance and, and democratization. In, in sports, and visibility a COVID of scare in at the Tokyo Olympics. More athletes test positive for COVID-19 ahead of the opening of the 2021 Olympics in five days. In the internationals, German Chancellor Angela Merkel visits flood hate areas in Germany as rescue efforts continue amid a rising death toll. And representatives of the Afghan government and the, the Taliban, Taliban meet in Doha Leader, Hiba for Tua, talks as violence rages in Afghanistan, with foreign forces almost entirely withdrawn. Well, that's the top of the news and much more. Thanks for staying with us. My name is Momodin Jai. It's great to have you here. Let's begin this bulletin with the Catholic community of the Gambia and Banjul Diocese has paid their final respects to one of its first members and reverend priests, Father Peter Solomon Gomez, commonly called PP. Hundreds of mourners, led by Reverend Father Edward Gomez, gathered at the St. Teresa's Parish Church, Parish Church rather, on Friday for a special mass attended by the First Lady of the Gambia. Government ministers, politicians, and the Bishop of the Anglican Mission, alongside priests from Guinea-Bissau and Senegal, are Bernadette Sane has more. The, the Bishop, Bishop of the Catholic Diocese of Banjo, Right Reverend Bishop Dr. Gabriel Mendes, CSSP, led the thousands of mourners who came to pay their final respect to the late Father Peter Solomon Gomez, who died two weeks ago on July 1st. Ordained as a priest in April 1985, the late, the late Father, Father Peter Solomon, Solomon Gomez was born on, on the 21st of July, 1955, in Banjul. The, the late priest completed his priestly formation in Junior Seminary in 1977 and went on to continue his academic pursuit at the St. Paul's College and Senior Seminary in Bangalore, Liberia where he spent seven years obtaining a bachelor's degree in philosophy and theology. As a priest, the late Father Peter Gomez served in many parishes and Catholic committees, where he built a great legacy in his work with the communities across the Gambia. Father Gomez also served as a vicar general of the diocese. At the solemn mass in celebration of his life, his brother priest, Reverend Father Edward Gomez, spoke at length on the storied and distinguished life of the late priest. Reverend Father Peter Solomon Gomez, who lives here, and we celebrate his life, was a simple man character, characterized by soft spokenness and the attitude of taking his time in all that he does. He was contented with choosing the lovely vocation of the priesthood and lived a committed life to the demands of his vocation. Father Edu reminded worshippers of the virtues of peace, humility, and respect for the elders, which he described as the late priest's biggest qualities. In my giving opportunity to live with Father Peter Solomon Gomez for 10 years, we have never raised a quarrel against each other. The secret behind this was the great sense of respect and tolerance I had for him as an older brother. I reserve great respect, tolerance, and understanding between me and him. And this was a homely culture. And we lived it out even in the prison. Urging stronger compassion and unity for an inclusive society, Father Edu advised the nation's leaders 
to demonstrate more empathy towards the population. In our churches today, most especially during this era of the COVID-19 pandemic, many people are homeless, some are hungry, some are sick. But what do we do for them? They are beggars in the streets. Young men and young boys who are going around because of poverty, abject poverty, are beginning to be violent and taking on the lives of people or taking the material possessions of people by force. Our politicians, what are you doing for the poor? What are you doing for the sick? What are you doing for the homeless beggars in the streets during this pandemic time? The late priest was described by many as a great mentor, peace lover, and faithful gentleman who loves music, which he plays using his favorite instrument, the organ, during his early days. The late Father Peter Solomon Gomez was finally laid to rest at the Christian Cemetery in Banjo. If we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So, whenever we live or die, we belong to the Lord. Romans 14, verse 8. For the news, I am Bernadette Sani. Bernadette Sani there with the report. The resilience of organizations for transformative smallholder agriculture program which recently validated its communication and knowledge management strategy document in Abuko. The initiative is geared towards the effective implementation of the multi-million dollar six-year project. Janke Ture reports. The Unions of Organizations for Transformative Smallholder Agriculture Programs, ROOTS, is a six-year funded project aims to improve food security, nutrition, and smallholder farmers' resilience to climate change in the Gambia. ROOTS has validated its strategic document plan to serve as a guide to its communication and knowledge management initiatives for timely service delivery, which is in line with the project's goals and objectives. Noha Nyangado, the communication officer for the project, dilated on the significance of the document. This is what is going to dictate you know, how we are going to communicate with um, project beneficiaries, with our stakeholders, with partners. So it is very, very important and that we, um, we get it right. As you know, the Roots project is for the youth and women, as 80% um, of the project target is for women and 25% is for youth. The document, which is divided into three thematic areas, including community action plan, will also support the project in taking charge to rural development activities. Project stakeholders will be opportune to discuss and disseminate knowledge and experiences during project implementation, thus reaching targeted beneficiaries. We felt that you know, um, communication is key, so um, therefore you know, uh, it needs to touch all these areas. As you can see, the strategy does not only focus on communication, but also on knowledge management, the project experience, that we want to showcase and then you know take it to a wider audience so that is why it encompasses all these areas in line with national development plan 2018 to 2021 the project will contribute in transforming the country to a green economy driven by small and medium-sized private sector investments and delivering sustainable and inclusive gains Mamo Aliu join the project director said the project will increase agricultural productivity and access to markets for enhanced food security and nutrition. If you look at the project design, it is uh, in the rice and horticulture value chains. And who are the primary actors in rice and horticulture? It's the women, absolutely. So that is how the project was designed. Secondly, we want to motivate the youth to be more involved in agriculture. And the reason for that, I think, is straightforward. As a youth yourself, you would understand that you constitute uh, the biggest chunk of this population. There is also the challenge of youth employment. So therefore, we think that engaging you in agriculture is a win-win situation, both for the sector, but both uh, as well for, for the youth. 
Participants may drawn from different institutions to deliberate on the document for a workable solution. Among the issues raised was inclusion of persons with disabilities. We also need to have regional field this. All right. The, the project is have regional coordinators, they have regional activities, they have regional budgets. So there is the need before the uh, visibility day, national one, we can have regional field day where farmers will also do this at the level of the field. With the adoption of the communication and knowledge strategy document, expectations are that the roots project will be visible nationwide and beyond. For GRT's News, Jack Ture. The Huawei Company Limited officials on Sunday presented 100 rams through the Minister of Interior, Yankuba Sonko, for onward distribution to representatives of different community mosques in Bakau, Bakote, Prikama, and other beneficiaries. Kadija Tujalo has more on that story. The humanitarian gesture of providing 100 rams to needy Gambians for the Tobaski feast, according to officials, started last year during the peak of the first wave of COVID-19 outbreak, when many people were left struggling with challenges of the pandemic. This intervention by Hawaii, according to its country manager, forms part of the company's corporate responsibilities to give back to Gambians. You know, uh, Huawei has been in Gambia for almost uh, 60 years. Yeah, in Gambia, yeah, in Gambia, in Gambia for Gambia. Gambia. Yeah, so yeah, in so addition to helping Gambia to build a digital economy and uh, providing a platform and uh, environment suitable for local talent cultivation and uh, development, Huawei also proactively fulfills its corporate social responsibility. In the future, Huawei will continue to proactively participate in Gambia's digital economic transformation and proactively practice its corporate social responsibility. Huawei is the world's leading global provider of information and communication technology, infrastructure and smart devices. The Chinese technology giant is operating in 170 countries, including the Gambia. Interior Minister Yankuba Sonko, who received the rounds on behalf of the beneficiaries, explained. Huawei has cooperated deeply with telecommunication operators such as Gamtel, Gamcel, QCell, AfriCell, Commune, and others. From CDMA to 2G, from 3G to 4G, to the construction of the Gambia's national broadband network. Huawei has deeply involved in the construction of Gambia's communication network directly or indirectly, creating nearly 300 ITC jobs in the Gambia and providing an environment for local ITC talent cultivation. Minister Sonko also commended the Hawaii management for complementing government's efforts in improving the lives and livelihoods of the citizenry. On behalf of the government of the Gambia and on my own behalf, I want to thank you very much for, for, for the gift and also to tell you that this has going to is going to affect it's going to have tremendous effect on the life of the people because um, quite a number of people who are here present here today probably will not have the the, 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 the economy to cater for themselves Baba Jawara, a native of Bakau, who spoke on behalf of the beneficiaries, thanks the Hawaii officials for the timely gesture, noting the importance and joy that comes with having a ram to slaughter during the feast. We are happy today. On behalf of the Alcalo and the Imams of and the entire people of and the, all the Imams of Bakau, we are so much happy and we thank you people for your generosity. With price of sacrificial rams beyond the purchasing power of some families, those fortunate to benefit from this generosity can now enjoy the Tupaski with their families and loved ones. Kadija Tujalo, reporting for GRC's News. The Ministry of Gender, Children, Social Welfare through the Directorate of Gender, Equality and Women Empowerment is currently training women leaders across the country on governance and democratization. The scheme targets women leaders in different disciplines and counselors. A correspondent in the Central River region, Mola Minsani, tells us more. 
continue in their engagement from the Lower River region, officials from the Directorate of Gender, Equality and Women Empowerment under the Gender Ministry have engaged stakeholders in the Central River region for another crucial event. Their three-day undertaking is to train women councillors and leaders across the region on governance and democratization ahead of the 2021 presidential election. Majority of women who have the grand footing in terms of politics are not educated. We also know that uh, these are also barriers of women coming out. But of course, as we look at the international scene, uh, our democratization process is going through a reform and um, women coming out in 2021, 2022 and 2023 to show interest in, in becoming candidates. The initiative funded by ECOWAS is focused on empowering women to participate meaningfully in politics and obtain leading roles in governance. Considering the fact that women in the Gambia constitute over half of the population of electorates and their role in decision-making processes remains quite critical as we prepare to conduct the presidential election on 4th December 2021. I believe very sincerely that this knowledge-based skills and technical engagement is for the enhancement of women's capacity in the Gambia to become more effective and efficient in participating in democratic governance in the country. The tailored sessions engage women participants with constant messages, reminding them of the need to become leaders than followers of politicians. The computerization of the border has been very key in our recommendations. And I'm um, just made to understand that the project is in the offense and your support to the immigration department. By extension, we also thank you for the support you've given to our women folks in this country, this country, their ministry, because these are the most vulnerable people or vulnerable group in the whole country. And in the existence of humanity, as a matter of fact, women, children, the old are the most vulnerable constituents of our society. ECOWAS officials also use the event to hand over materials to help women group prevent themselves from COVID-19. At the end of this three-day session, these women leaders are expected to further educate other women in their various communities to enhance their effective participation in politics and governance. Modula Minsane reported for GRS News from the Central River Region. Now, similar trainings were also conducted for women leaders in the Central River Region. A regional correspondent, Famara Kanye, reports. Trauma of the incident and the hardship incurred by families was huge. The forum is meant to promote the participation of women in decision making and governance and the democratization processes. The governor of the region, Sambaba, helps the development, adding that increasing the presence and visibility of women in leadership and decision making processes at all levels of democratic governance and other spheres is key to achieving national goals. Uh, looking at the fact that uh, the women population overshadowed all other uh, sects, so uh, based on that, that uh, ministry was created and again did not stop there, but uh, minister uh, became a female again to take care. And these were some of the things that I was telling them and then uh, looking at also their involvement in politics. Uh, we were advising to make sure that this time let them also come out in their numbers because looking at the voter registration, it has shown us that the number of women who registered supersedes all other you know, sets, uh, that is the order that is male. So therefore, it is also important for them to be involved in politics so that they can be also voted in. Governor Ba noted that the government has and would continue to empower women through the effective policies citing some development in the gender and agriculture ministry. The government of the day is more than willing to make sure that they change the lives and livelihood of women in this country. A better example is the uh, the, the Women Enterprise Forum, which the disbursement has already started, and we have seen women couples have now collected the monies and they have started the business. This is what government can do for the women in order to improve their lives. Coming into agriculture also, you looked at it, and the same, for the first time, a female being appointed as the Minister of Agriculture. All these things are steps in trying to at least compensate women for their numbers and at the same time also for their involvement in politics and also in other spheres of, 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 of work life. 
Deputy Permanent Secretary and the Minister of Gender, Children and Social Welfare, Kajali Sonko, said the objective of the training is to enhance democratization processes and also increase the participation and representation of women in decision making. As we know, most of the um, indicators in terms of our performance as a country in meeting some of those variables, particularly uh, women in cabinet, women in the National Assembly, women in the local councils, that is local governance, is indeed not at an appropriate measurement. Um, and this effort is to how do we look at the electoral cycle and of course include the processes where women can stand and say we are interested in becoming candidates. DPS Sonko Fada said the forum is jointly organized by the ECOWAS Commission as a means of giving support for women to access reproductive resources. This is all an effort to ensure that women have the ultimate liberty to decide on their own, to have a faith in their progress, to have uh, a source of income that they can make decisions that will not affect uh, their livelihood. The Lady Councillor of Jimara, who also doubles as the focal person for the event, Ajayara Jagana said this signals a great move in promoting women participation in local governance. This training is an important measure that seeks to empower women themselves by reducing the barriers to entry into the political sphere and improve female participation in local governance. Sayyidu Kamara, reporting for the news from Basse, Upper River Region. The report was by Seidu Kamara in the Upper River Region, Rada Dan Famara Kani. Now, moving on. Officials of the National Disaster Management Agency, NDMA, were in the North Bank region to visit disaster victims. A reporter, Famara Kani, tells us more. Trauma of the incident and the hardship incurred by families was huge. For some, For some, walking over walking the whole over ISO, the whole ISO will, take months, will take months, if not if a year. year. Sisendin Ture is a victim from Dar es Salaam, a community hard hit by the devastating rainstorm. With the executive director of NDMA and his team of inspectors in her compound, relief is slowly approaching. I believe the incident was destined by God, but we are really present at the moment. If the government can help us with food and building materials, that will be definitely good. Her story is similar to many who may not have access to this platform. Under their personally blown up roofs, they are trailing to the hardest moments of their lives. Our principal target are the victims. And once we all come under a national framework, we will actually target the victim that needs our support. The National Disaster Management Agency has considered the recent disaster as the most severe throughout its history of existence 13 years ago. And the agency is now hoping to unleash urgent assistance to victims across the country. Uh, we realize that some um, institutions are collecting data on their, their own. I don't think this is right. We have a multi-hazard data collection, and I will call on all partners and philanthropists to work with NDMA and work through NDMA so that all whatever we are, we are, our, we are doing in terms of our intervention, there will be no duplication. Our, our intervention will not also be misdirected. Fatu Lo and Jim Bide, both from Kerjarga, also have their stories to narrate. Since the incident occurred, my children and I all sleep at my neighbor's house. We have no other means. I lost food items and many other valuables. It has really affected me. At first, I used to have trouble feeding my family, but now I have to concentrate on building my house. I am calling on the government to support me. Only the noise of birds, the bustling Gambia Songhai Institute in Chamin, is gripped by silence. The disaster has worked on the morale of the admin and students. It has severely weakened the level of knowledge transfer within the campus. 
This building was a poultry housing over 4,000 birds, but the aftermath of the storm left only a handful. The rest had all died. For these young chicks, the noise they generate cannot determine their health condition. They have survived the incident, but the journey ahead of them will now depend on strength. The school administration said the damage cost over half a million dollars. And the structures around was also very damaged. The, the brooding house were also very damaged. The birds were also being killed. Mortality was very, the mortality, mortality rate was very high on that very day. This is very shocking indeed. The visit of the NDMA boss to victim families has by far boosted their confidence and their level of patience in waiting for government assistance is also increased. For the news, I am Farmer Akani. On Friday, Club Four Gambia graduated its third cohort of students who successfully completed a 12-month training in communication, writing, bookkeeping, and computer skills. Kadi Tujalo was there. After years of dedication and hard work, a dream finally comes true for these graduating students ready to enter the world of war. In 2015, we established this non-profit skill training center that teaches tailoring and fashion designer to help the less privileged early school leavers discourage any pregnancy and the back way, illegal migration to Europe and also get them off the streets. The president of Club Foire, Marie Juf, held the Rotary Club of Fajara and Rodin Revolve in UK for supporting the training program, providing vital skills for youth participants. To set up this training program with the two lotteries together with SOCTIM help equip the centre with various training aids, equipment in the form of laptops, projectors, overhead screens and sewing machines, among other things. Officials speaking at the gathering, including Rotarian President Daura So, commended the students for dedicating their time to the training, which he said will empower them to be self-reliant. Thank you very much for honoring your commitment to complete the training and uh, this has brought us success today and uh, we hope the success will continue to multiply as you go into your different sectors. As previously mentioned, the Rotary Club of Fajara came into existence over 20 years ago. And one of the goals that we do is to work with community members, we work with societies to help develop skills and help to make society much, much better. Um, I wish you all the best for the future. No doubt some of you will be employable, you will uh, start working for people. But then what I recommend is uh, for you to be employers and employ people, set up your own businesses, start new startups. Um, that is how uh, you could help complement the efforts of government. Government cannot do it all, but if you have your own business and then you employ other people, uh, then you will contribute to national development. Graduating student Fatu Jonga delivered the vote of thanks, expressing appreciation for the unique training opportunity. For Club Four, this is a massive milestone as the institution graduates its start cohort of students. Kadija Tujalo, reporting for GRTS News. Live from Banjul, this is GRTS News. We'll take a quick break and return with the internationals right after this stay with us. Make your nights as bright as your days with AfriCell's new Night Bundle. Your night browsing experience has now been boosted by AfriMoney at the most affordable price. Enjoy the cheapest Night Bundle in the Gambia and feel the difference in comfort and speed. Activate the Night Bundle from your AfriMoney account and receive one gigabyte of data for fifty dollars is only. Browse, stream, and talk all night long from 1 a.m. to 8 a.m. for only $50. Activate your AfriMoney account by dialing star 777 hash and select Buy AfriSell Data to choose your online bundle valid for 24 hours. What more could you ask for? This 
bundle is only available through AfriMoney. Your AfriMoney account, your night browser. Where AfriSell goes, oh, nobody dares to follow. Dares to follow. German Chancellor Angela Merkel has visited Schuld, a German uh, village devastated by flooding. Police say the death toll in Western Germany is more than 110, with fears the number may still rise. The overall death toll from floodings in Western Europe has climbed above 180 as rescue workers dig deep into debris left by receding waters. Representatives of the Afghan government and the Taliban met in Doha for talks on Saturday as violence rages in Afghanistan with foreign forces almost entirely withdrawn. The two sides have been meeting on and off for months in the Qatari capital, but the talks have lost momentum as insurgents make battlefield gains. Several high-ranking officials, including former Afghan chief executive Abdullah Abdullah, gathered in a luxury hotel on Saturday afternoon or after morning rather prayers. They were joined by negotiators from the Taliban's political office in Doha. Former President Hamid Karzai had also been due to travel to Doha, but remained in Kabul, according to a source. Taliban Supreme Leader Hibatullah Akhundzada has said he strenuously favors a political settlement to the conflict in Afghanistan. The announcement comes as representatives of the Afghan government and Taliban sat down for a new round of talks in Doha over the weekend. Talks were due to resume on Sunday. The Taliban leader said his group remained committed to forging a solution to end the war, but he slammed the opposition parties for wasting time. For months, the two sides have been meeting on and off in the Qatari capital, but have achieved a little. Since early May, the Taliban have launched a staggering assault across Afghanistan's rugged countryside. Meanwhile, uh, Taliban Supreme Leader Hibatullah Hakundazada said he strenuously favors a political settlement to the conflict in Afghanistan. Well, that takes us straight to the uh, news roundup. The Gam And now to sports and Tokyo. More positive tests at the Tokyo Olympics have raised fears of a major outbreak ahead of the Tokyo Games, slated to start in five days. The positive test has further stroked or stoked concerns over the virus infiltrating the event, in particular the Olympic Village, meant to house about 11,000 athletes who have traveled to Japan for the Olympics, which were postponed in 2020 due to the pandemic. On Sunday, organizers reported 10 new cases connected to the Olympics, including a third athlete who was not staying in the village, down from 15 new cases a day earlier. South Africa also confirmed three positive COVID-19 cases in their football squad competing in the Olympic Games. And now to Egypt. Egyptian side Al Ahli sealed a record extending 10th African Champions League title after beating 10 man Kaiser Chiefs of South Africa 3 0 in Saturday's final in Casablanca, Morocco. Egyptian fans took to the streets in Cairo, celebrating their club's latest trophy. Well, live from Banjul, this is GRTS News at 8. A quick look at our top stories before we take leave of you. The Gambia's Catholic community has paid their final respects to the late father, Reverend Peter Solomon Gomez. Long nights of work to finish customer orders, GRTs visited tailors across the city and made the rush to complete special garments for Tobaski. Increasing women's participation in the civic process, the Minister of Gender and Children is sensitizing women leaders across the country on governance and democratization. In sports, a COVID scare at the Tokyo Olympics. More athletes are testing positive for COVID-19 ahead of the opening of the 2021 Olympics, set to start in five days. 
In the internationals, German Chancellor Angela Merkel has visited flood hit areas in Germany as rescue efforts continue amid a rising death toll. And the representatives of the Afghan government and the Taliban have met in Doha for talks as violence rages in Afghanistan, with foreign forces almost entirely withdrawn. Well, that's it for this edition of the GRTS News. Join us at 10 p.m. again for more news. In the history of the Gambia, Gambia Printing Publishing Corporation proudly introduces the Bibliomatic Exercise Book Printing Machine. The machine has the capacity to print more than 20,000 books per hour. Yes, 20,000 books per hour. It also prints magazines, newspapers, calendars, flyers, normal books and all kinds of printed documents plus items at affordable prices. With the Bilomatic printing machine, GPPC can now render high quality and non size restricted printing service supply across the sub region. Rush now and partner with GPPC for all your public and private printing service needs. Print with us today and you'd be offered highly professional, reliable, and efficient service delivery by our team of experts. The Gambia Printing and Publishing Corporation is here to meet all demands and is reliable at all times. For more info, contact us on 437-4493 or 437-4402. GPPC is Gambian and it's yours. You can now benefit from up to 60 minutes for free by using your AfriMoney account. You need to subscribe to the Stay Safe Mix Bundle using your AfriMoney account and receive free AfriSell to AfriSell minutes valid for 7 days. To activate, dial star 777 hash, select buy data bundles and pay. $150 is only to enjoy 1.5 gigabyte, 60 minutes of on-net calls and 3,000 SMSs valid for 7 days. Or $10 is to only enjoy 40 megabytes, 2 minutes of on-net calls and 100 SMSs valid for 7 days. Where AfriSell goes, oh, oh, nobody dares to follow. Dares to follow. In a country always thirsty for more, a team of superheroes with special powers unite to redefine the way we are connected. Big Bob Rambayashi steps up your communication with the DOK service, giving you 1,000 minutes of talk time to one special person for $150 only. Valid for one month. Enjoy your talk time. Type SUB and send by SMS to 135 to activate the TOK service. Africa got office with the power.